Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about using the async suffix in your c -sharp methods when the return type is a task that is supposed to be awaited. Now I'm sure you see this all the time in c -sharp code in general where you have do something async and you're supposed to await that method. But why do we put that async method exactly? How did it come to be sort of the norm and why it is not used in some places? Now I do understand that this is very very opinionated and the reason why I make this video is so everyone can express their opinion and their thoughts about why they use it or not use it or how they use it in the comments down below. So if you do use it or you don't use it, please leave a comment down below letting us know why you do so. As part of this video, I will also be giving my opinion on the matter as well. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on dometrain.com. Okay, so the async suffix, what am I referring to? Let's take a look at some code I have over here from a previous video talking about Redis caching. Now, if you go to the weather folder, you're going to find this iWeather service. And this iWeather service is supposed to be a service that allows you to get the weather for a given city in the world. And the way I named it in that video is get weather for city async. Now, why did I say async here? Well, that's kind of the norm and it's more of a legacy thing that we kind of carried over because you have to understand where it comes from. Back in the day, c -sharp only had synchronous methods. You would return a void if it was a task in this case, unless the task was supposed to be just run in the background, or you would return the type itself, not a task of the type itself. When we did eventually get await async in C Sharp 5, however, we got in a situation where you have your synchronous methods that block the thread and wait over there, and then you have your async methods that are non-blocking, they are concurrent, and just so they can coexist with other methods, they have to be differentiated somehow. And the reason why we needed to do that is because imagine that we did not have the async method suffix, but we did have an extra method that doesn't return here a task of that type, but the type itself. If we did that, you're going to get a compilation error saying that member with name signature is already declared. So you couldn't have both a synchronous and an asynchronous method just differentiated by the return type. Makes sense. This means that we got into a point where you had synchronous methods and asynchronous methods, and you couldn't just delete the synchronous methods because, well, they're here to be backwards compatible as well. Yes, you're supposed to be using the new methods when you can, but when you don't, you don't want to break anyone. A prime example of how this worked at the time is the web client class, which you can imagine sort of as the previous HTTP client class. So in web client, which still exists, by the way, we can take a look over here and see that we have a bunch of methods, for example, upload data, which is a synchronous method, and upload data async. The only difference if we go to definition is the return type and the name. So you have a byte array for upload data and no async suffix. And if I go to upload data async, it is a task version. Same with download data, download data async, download string, download string async. As you're going to see, it's going to be the same sort of idea and concept. What's also very funny to me is that if you do a bit of a research here, you're going to see that we also had the task async naming convention. So you would have, as you can see here, download data, download data async, download data task async. The reason for that, just so you don't get confused, is that when you try to add a tap method, which tap refers to the task-based asynchronous pattern, then if you already had something with an async suffix, you were supposed to be using name task async. Super confusing. We don't really do this or see this anymore, but if you happen to see it, just so you know, that's why we had it. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dom Train called From Zero to Hero NT Framework. In that course, our new author, Hannes Lawet, will take you into an eight hour journey learning everything there is to learn about NT Framework. And this course is actually two courses into one. We did think of releasing them as two separate courses, but it makes more sense for your experience to be one massive one. Hannes is an excellent teacher who has been teaching NT Framework for years. He does conference talks, workshops. He's just amazing. And I know him personally. He was one of my very first handpicked authors for Dome Train, and he knocked it out of the park with this one. There is no better NT Framework results out there right now, all up to date with everything you need to know all the way up to dot. Net 8. Now, as always, to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount code. So use the link in the description and don't wait for Black Friday because this course will be excluded on Black Friday. So 20% will be the max you can get. All right, enough with that. Now back to the video. 
So we kind of established with this pattern that this is an old thing where when you have both of them in the same space, it makes sense to have an async suffix. But moving forward, more and more APIs in C Sharp stopped having the sync version. Everything was just async by default. So why would they still be suffixed with an async suffix? Well, by that point, because of how many years we had it, it was sort of expected that you would do so to indicate to the caller that this is a thing that returns a task because maybe it's not immediately obvious and especially warnings back in the day by the compiler were not as good. So you would say async and you would have something that is awaitable. So you would use the await keyword because we also have tasks that just run in the background. So if that's the case and we're supposed to be using async as a suffix just by convention and as a pattern, why things like control methods don't have an async suffix because if you go to any sample or Microsoft code or anywhere you will not see an async suffix in controllers I'm gonna go into some code I have here from my workshop that I'm running and again if you're interested in attending one of those workshops the link to see where I'm running them is in the description and if I go to this controller over here you're gonna see create even though it's an async task then get even though it's an async task get all update whatever but the methods themselves in the customer service I'm injecting do have async as a suffix. Why is that? Well, that's because controller methods are supposed to be called by the framework, not by a human. So you don't need to indicate to anybody that this is supposed to be awaitable. That's why you will never see controllers or in general things that are supposed to be called by the framework have an async suffix. What's very interesting is if you go to documentation from back in the day, we can actually search for async or actually for suffix and you will see some guidelines allowing you to know how you should name and how you should expect the naming to function. And you can see that in Microsoft official guidance from Visual Studio 2012, which is a long time ago, I know, but it was the official guidance, you can see that they say the name of an async method by convention ends with an async suffix. So you're supposed to sort of have it there and expect it to be there. So what do I recommend? What am I doing in my C Sharp code? Well, I'm following this simple approach. Usually to this day, I am still using the async suffix. If I have an I customer service or something that is supposed to be a task of T that is supposed to be awaitable, then I will have the name of the thing and then async as a suffix. And that's not necessarily because I want to have it here, but because it's sort of expected at this point to have it there. However, I will never use it in something that is supposed to be primarily called by the framework. Controllers, you won't see it. Mediator handlers, you won't see it because that is not supposed to be called by an individual that is writing the code, but rather the framework itself that is auto-wired up. And this also includes things like unit tests. Of course, if I'm writing a unit test or a test of some capacity, I will not have the async suffix on the test method itself because it will be called by the testing framework. And now this is where I want to know more about how you do this. Do you agree with my approach? Do you disagree? Do you just not use it at all? Which is something I've seen quite a bit actually do leave a comment down below and let me know i'm really really curious and please have a healthy discussion because this is a heavily opinionated topic and i want to have as many opinions as possible so i can actually shape my opinion based on something that does make sense well that's all i have for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding